and city council order. Are there any agenda additions or changes? I do not have any. I don't have any. Amber, are you with us? I am. Excellent. Amber's online. Marcus Serta is not going to be able to join us tonight. Um, all right, with no agenda changes, uh, we'll move on to public to be heard. Um, this is a portion of the meeting where folks can bring questions or concerns to the council on items that are or not on the agenda. Um, anyone in the audience here who has anything they'd like to share? The questions doesn't appear so in the room. And I don't see any hands up online. So we'll give it another couple seconds. And hearing none, we will move on to the first business item, which is a conversation with Rick Jones, our public works superintendent. Hot seat is right in front of you. Good evening. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming. Thanks for sharing your, your year with us. Yeah, that's a, that's a kind of a real brief. And <laughs> yeah. I don't know how in depth you really want to get into this. I'm sure there'd be some questions, but Marcus is in here, so it's going to be a few questions less. I figured the right side of the room, I was going to... I just wanted to get that of the recording. I was just, just going to say yes. <laughs> but Marcus is free to stop by any time at the shop and ask me questions. That's okay. no problem. I'm not saying that. No, you've done it. No, you've done it. It was a little leery of the right side of the table, though, Hein. To be honest. <laughs> Well, why don't you just uh, for the for the we we have all of this in front of us, but for the sake of those watching or watching later, why don't you just kind of run us through what you shared with us? Sure. And yep. you know, as much detail or as little detail as you like. Okay. Perfect. A couple of the quick bullets of the sure. uh, the back the back. Actually, you have an iPad with like circles and arrows. Back in the day, yes, yeah. not so much. This, yeah, there's one little thing I said I could just do a paper cheat sheet on this one. Easy. <laughs> that was good. That was fun. Yeah. Got one show and tell prepared. If it's right. Nice yes. We have oh, yeah. Something is queued up just in case. Okay. <laughs> we have we have to guess it though. I bet. <laughs> All right, we might give you a hint. Just move on. So some of the things in the last six months. Uh, one of the big things is we we finally took delivery of a new pickup truck, which we were almost a year, probably a year out with that thing, and the truck that we were trying to trade in would not have passed state inspection again. So I was getting a little nervous. We're gonna have to park that in the corner of the shop somewhere or out in the, in the garage because we do we do let um ejrp use a vehicle or two two in the in the winter time they're using one right now they're having vehicle problems too and i think they're in the same boat trying to get stuff fixed and get stuff ordered it's just tough out there mm -hmm. so that was great to see that that was a that was a big plus and we also ordered a, a new dump truck plow and wing standard unit and that's gonna be about two years to get out to get so it's it not this winter but next winter will be you'll see it on the road you're just not making them yeah the supply is not there and the the build slots like for the dump trucks the build slots we're hoping to do that'd be my next one here but we're hoping to order another one next month so we can get that on the build slot and more than likely it would be probably two years on the dump trucks you've got the chassis part of it so you get that once they get that in, then it goes to the body people. They put all the dump body, the wings, the plows. So and they're way out too. So it's yeah, it's it's way different than it used to be. Yes. Yeah. And we have we got some uh, staff shortage. Yeah, but there is in the last three to four weeks, we did hire a part-time person for public works to help mow lawns. Uh, retired gentleman, some of you might know him, Ray Weed. He's, he's on the fire, used to be on the fire department for a long time. Uh, he's been doing great. We got him out there mowing, and even in this heat, I was kind of a little questionable how he did. He keeps coming back. He says he likes it. So, yeah, he's doing <laughs> great. And uh, an admin with wastewater and um, public works, Patrice. Patrice, I have a really hard time finding that name. And she's about like say, three weeks, I think. And she's catching on great. And I, that's, she's going to be a good fit. I think. Yeah, no, it's going to be good. It's going to be a big help. Yes. Uh, we're working on the main tree water line. Uh, you've probably been updated on some of that. We're going to go, you know, we've got some struggles there. We're going to try to go back out. We're going to go out to bid this, uh, this winter. So we can hopefully get that. We will get it done. I just say in the springtime to get that wrapped up. Ledge, that's the yeah. Ledge was yeah. a biggie. Yep. Uh, the Crescent Connector, still plugging away. I don't know if you folks have seen it. You've yeah. probably driven by or 
sat in traffic waiting to go through it. <laughs> um, that is coming along good. Yes, no, that's, and it looks like there's, they have to have a September, September completion date. And it, from what I'm seeing, they're going to, they should be able to beat that a little bit. I don't want to jinx it. Yeah, I don't know if it was intended the other night, but it was open. Um, so I drove it. Right. Um, <laughs> parked right in the middle of it, walked around. Yeah. Um, looks amazing. And I hear the traffic light poles or the arms are going up. I read tonight. Yes, the mast um, arms. <clears throat> that'll be in the next few weeks. You're going to see what well, you've seen is a good different or good changes now. And it's really starting now. Yeah. I, I guess the question, not to interrupt you too much, but the question for me now is like, how, how is it going to open? Are people just going to wake up? How are we, how are we going to do that? We, we don't have to get into it. You want to like do a, but I mean, yeah, like, if you want to do like a, a ribbon party, no, I, well, <laughs> you want I like mean, a ribbon you know, cutting or I, do we order the we could, foot scissors now? We can, yeah, I don't, I don't know where now he's probably going to be in back order. It takes forever to get them. <laughs> it's going to be two <laughs> years to get yeah. the scissors. They come with the truck. So, right. Yeah. They're right. <laughs> so. So no, we, we haven't. Well, so did you mean like ceremonially or like? Well, I, I, I didn't mean ceremonially. So I really don't want. To. I photographed people for years with those stupid scissors. I'm not doing <laughs> that. Like Amber can do it. It's very much a VP role. Um, no, I meant just, just quite literally. How, like, what's, how is it going to function? Are we just going to announce like, hey, Monday morning? We're, well, like um, when, when Susie Wilson Road, when they went from one lane going right and two lanes going left to two lanes going right and one lane going left. They just did it. They just did it, yeah. I'm, well, I'm hoping the, the sign boards will be, you know, the, the <laughs> outreach with Ashley and stuff, you'll put stuff Well, that's out. kind of, yeah, I mean, you know, like- You're gonna have that stuff. Is there it. a plan to, you know, and we don't have to get into it now, like I said, no. just to start letting people know the how and why it's gonna be cool for you and what, right. you know, remind folks like, do try it because you might find that it gets you through quicker, all that kind yeah, of thing. Once, yeah, once we get closer to it, I'm sure. Yeah, I know, <laughs> better work. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, and just to clarify, since you mentioned that, Raj, um, it is not open for people to through. No, I figured. Traffic yeah. through there. just Right, so for the viewing public, technically you're not supposed to drive through there. Yeah. <laughs> Virginia. Well, if it makes you feel better, I turned around and went out the way I came, so I didn't quite make it. I didn't go over the tracks. So oh, you didn't. So you I really didn't go didn't halfway. Drive. You really didn't drive it. Then. Not so much. I walked a part of it. No, you, yeah. So you really. So I wasn't drive. really there. No, you weren't really. Oh, <laughs> uh, we recently got some new software for our meter reading. It's a cloud base, which is a lot easier for us to use. Um, instead of downloading a, a thumb drive and attaching that and going out, driving and come back, download. Mm -hmm. It's basically, you grab that, you got an iPad or iPhone or Android device. You go out around with that. With We have an MRX, so another machine that hooks to it, syncs to it. And you can drive around and, and well, I can do, think about a little over 3,000 accounts, almost 3,000 accounts, probably in about four hours spent on traffic. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, wow. it, it goes, it goes good. If traffic's a mess most we're going to find out when once we start playing with a little more find out what roads we can skip and it will still catch mm. you know so i'm trying to find out if yeah. i don't have to hit every road i kind of skip one and then but yeah no it's been great so that's that's, that's good and i think we've got probably got 300 to 350 i'm going to guess more meters to change out so we can read those because we still have some we have to go around to physically go to the go to the house but we're still plugging away on those so. well yeah so the look ahead six months uh, again like i said we're going to try to order a new we're going to order a new dump truck uh next month and we're kind of debating whether to go it's a cdl vehicle now we're kind of my, myself and jamie the foreman we're kind of debating back and forth if we go knock it down to a non-cdl vehicle because of the we're having a hard time hiring people and especially cdl drivers and we're kind of debating it we're going to you know losing capacity in the in the truck bed itself it's a little lighter of a vehicle obviously you know so some of the bigger storms it, i might struggle a little bit i we're kind of debating it it, it might be you know the writing's kind of on the wall what we've seen in the last few years that we just can't get many ceo drivers to apply or applications period really we're not having yeah. <clears throat> we're not getting much back way back in the day we'd get 50 60 applications you know for a public works position and now we're lucky to, they get a dozen if that yeah it's in the the, the dozen we get there i don't believe they're from around here and i don't believe they want to work for essex junction so they're you know for whatever reason they, they come in like that but yeah it's, it's been difficult it's definitely difficult 
Um, again, for ne next year, we want to finish up Main Street water line, finish up that Crescent connector, and then the lead survey for the uh, um, lead and copper, little the lead. We have to go, and they should be wrapped. They'll they'll be wrapping that up uh, in October to put out. Yeah, How, how's we, that going? Are they getting a decent response? Do you know, or they... I think pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. from what I, from what I'm seeing, we got to get a we're going to get a little rundown from them here fairly soon. So <clears throat> uh, Re Regina will be able to share those numbers with you. But I think it's been going pretty good. Just recently, wastewater just got their their little flyer, and Chelsea asked me just to call them, so I just talked to them about that. So so they are still just put they're still putting them out. Who is the hire that you're referring to to hire someone? Uh, for public works, a uh, full-time public works employee. In general. Yes, oh. yeah, a public works employee. Yep. Can you speak a little bit, Rick, to the difference? I mean, you touched on it just a sec, but between a CDL and a non-CDL truck, you said you might struggle a little bit with some of the bigger storms. Those That vehicle is 26,001 pounds, requires a CDLB. Correct. And then under that, so... When we think about what you're driving around the city now, big dump trucks, are they two thirds of the size or do you have any general? Idea? Yeah, I'll oh, try to do the numbers. Um, I think we can put 10 ton of salt on the seven yard. There's a bigger truck. Yep. And I think we get, I think it's going to be about five to five, five and a half okay. on the, what we call a low pro. Yeah. The, that's the non cd and, it, and, I, and i'll say they're it's, great little trucks that we have one right now and it's a great little truck we use it in the hill section some of the tight spots but <clears throat> we're almost thinking we have to go and, and i'll tell you as someone who has a b uh it's not just you that's having trouble no no i know people with bees they're just nowhere it's i mean i have uh open positions in my employment that we just can't yeah they're just non-existent no no i didn't mean to imply yeah that. it's not oh no no it's i didn't i'm not agreeing that you did i'm yeah. just it's, from it's outside ev everywhere yes yeah. yeah nobody wants to be a trucker anymore and then uh you have some paving activity going on around the city yes we do uh in the acres and i just came down prospect and i noticed that's milled so I know yes we have some if you ground up and we uh maybe we can go to that slide maybe is uh, I have uh, a, a lot of friends that are in the acres that are ecstatic oh, about yes. their their paving yeah. activities. Oh, no, there's definitely a few down there. Abenaki territory. Uh, Abenaki's. Yes. Yeah. Very. I'm, sure I'm hearing from most definitely. Uh, so yeah, we got it highlighted in the purple, and you'll see prospect is like the top and the bottom of it. Uh, years ago, we had that section in between redone when they redid the, uh, I believe it was Summit Street. So they did each they, so we instead of trying to go over that we really don't need to yeah <clears throat> gotcha so i will say it. yeah as, as someone who drives south summit quite a bit i've noticed the activity there and yes uh, and i talked with a bunch of the neighbors through there and they're very very happy to see right. a new road surface coming in yes no that'd be to that nice. area uh and then um it'll ride nice and then it'll and you can clear the snow off it better so you use less salt because obviously you know with the nooks and crannies we can't clear it as good so that would be a plus it's probably a little bit hard for folks to see so we've got yeah. prospect street west hillcrest west hillcrest cherry street cherokee iroquois Abnet. but not all of iroquois and not all of abenaki next year when uh i probably should put that in my little next year plan that's right the uh the water line on iroquois we're going to do a, a water line from um uh, so south summit to orchard and then the whole road will be reconstructed from there and then also all the way down to park street the road route there. yes wow so if you're a big rollerblade fan or scooter fan or you could these well, it's roads funny, are nice. it's, it's funny you, it's funny you said happened. that because yeah. i was walking the dog the other night and our the couple who was the the big daily rollerbladers Oh, like yep. 20 laps in the neighborhood, I think they do. Um, went by, and I think what they basically said was, when are we on the paving list? <laughs> you can point them uh, to this list. Say, hey, you can head over that way. And yeah. But do not right yet. On, yeah. Do, yeah. do some kind of weird shape. <laughs> yeah, they can make a... I don't know about think Prospect. That would look like on Strava, but... Um, so Prospect and West Hillcourt are pretty steep, so hopefully they got good breaks. Really? <laughs> <laughs> <Not for sure. clears throat> 
climbing all day. <laughs> and then uh, the last piece I have for you is I don't want to go without acknowledging Ron Bundy and his trip to Plainfield. Yes. Yeah. Uh, awesome. With the with the super sucker, whether we're calling it the nine thousand or seven thousand. Seven thousand. Seven thousand. Okay, I want to make sure I get that I right. The, I thought the new one was nine. No. We went from five to seven. Oh, right, right, right. So uh, I talked with him a little bit. He was out on uh, Maple Street doing some some work out on the roadway. So I stopped and chatted with him for a minute. He said that they uh, cleared a thousand feet of pipe, uh, and he got to feed a, a balloon insert that they then uh, enlarged, and it sealed the pipe off so that if any more river water was to come, yes. wouldn't make their way to the treatment plant. And he said, in all his years of doing things, that he's never never had that experience. So that was great. Uh, and he said that he got down there in the afternoon. And he was back the same night, and. Uh, he had people ahead of him and behind him checking the road because they got there. They didn't, I don't think they had any idea how big that truck was when he got there. Uh, and so there were some areas that were, you know, tricky navigation. So I didn't want that to go unsaid because I think any time that we can, uh, you know, assist our neighbors, uh, it's fantastic. And Ron's a great guy and that truck is truly amazing. And he speaks so highly of it. So those two, it's yes, that's, you know, he loves driving. He was yes. very, He's very good operator. So yeah, and he, it, I just didn't that. want that to go unsaid. Oh, and appreciate so that. we're very grateful to him that he did that outside of normal hours, and and he had such a good time with it. Oh yes. yeah, I'm glad he took me seriously with the pictures. We really, I did really want yeah. to see. So I'm glad he, he shared some. I yeah. texted him, asked for pictures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were great. So he did get uh, some. Yes, yeah. that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you've got a new shop on here. Yeah. Oh, yes, You're, that's right. Wait a minute. I did, I did put, put that, that in bold. <laughs> <laughs> that a new shop, please. We are. We can't fit stuff in that. We are keenly aware. Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to, it is always um, sort of front of mind. Okay. I'm just working on it. Um, so just wanted to acknowledge that. Totally, totally aware of the conditions. <clears throat> we need, I thought this would be a great opportunity to throw that out there again. No, we didn't. We, did, we knew. But it would have been odd if you didn't mention it. <laughs> so, Probably would have. Yeah, you're right. Like, what's wrong with? Uh, but no, seriously, it's it's very much in the conversation. Because that super sucker seven thousand just barely. Does it fit now? Barely fits yeah, into that. That's right. I saw it. Yeah, no, we that was one of the things when we we spec'd it. It had to yeah. be able to fit in that, and that was very very tight. But they made it. So you've got to keep it half full just to get in the shop. Basically. Kind of. Yeah, you got to have it weighted down with some water. Yeah. Amber, any questions for Rick? No questions. Thanks, Rick, for coming. That's yes, no problem. Well, you were on a serious delay, video was. That's all right. Um, yeah. No, we appreciate you coming. Good. Um, and appreciate your management, too, and your help with all of the various complex street disturbance projects that have been mm. going on for yes. the past couple of years. It's not, I'm sure it's not easy getting the fielding a lot of the, a lot of the reaction, but um, it's all going to look great when it's done. Yes. So. Well, it'll be great when it, right when it's done. It'll be good. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for all you do, Ricky. Yes. No problem. Appreciate it. We're really proud of our public works department. We try. We try our best. You guys are great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy the rest of your night. Good night, guys. All right um move on to 5b interview and uh interview someone and well let me read it as it's written sorry interview and consider appointments to the tree advisory committee development review board and planning commission and we have one person tonight to be interviewed and right in front of me. <laughs> andrea short sleeve and i'm gonna guess <laughs> good. Yes. So come on up to the seat thank you for joining us um, we have what you shared with us, but if you could just introduce yourself and maybe say one or two things about, you know, why you're, why you're looking, what your interest is, why you're looking to participate in the tree advisory committee. Sure. Uh, my name is Andrea Shortsleeve. Uh, I grew up here in Essex, uh, third generation, actually. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, professionally, um, a habitat biologist for the Department of Fish and Wildlife. So I spend my days talking to people about improving their forest and fields to benefit uh, the wildlife and just our, our basic way of life here. Um, and 
growing up here and moving away and coming back, I think I have a perspective of, I have a picture of what Essex was and, and now what it is. And um, I live in, in the acres and I see a lot of my neighbors cutting down these big, beautiful trees that make Essex just like a really unique, beautiful community. And it, it, it saddens me. And so <laughs> um, I saw this opportunity as a way to one, give back to my community that I, I really have been a part of for the last, you know, 40 years. Um, and also just use my professional experience and knowledge in a way to, to serve the community that way. Um, not seeing that there is a, a conservation commission any longer in the city now that we've, we've split. Um, I felt like this was the best way to, to do that, so. Great. Just go around the room quickly, Amber, you're on a delay, so I don't know if you're hearing us, but um, I don't know if you have anything. I'm all set, thanks. Okay. Elaine? Well, I just wanted to remark that your um, experience and background is really mm -hmm. tailor-made for this committee. I'm yeah. very grateful that you decided to apply. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I would echo that as well. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm very delighted to see the, the list of applicants we've had across the board for all of our committees. Oh, it's been an amazing round. So, um, yeah, I can echo the, the watching trees go. I'm over on the west side of the fairgrounds, and I feel like once a week there's a tree company and they're removing something that's probably yeah. 50 plus 60 years old. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've done it, but it was dangerous. But yeah, it's, it's difficult to see. Um, have you been keeping up with what the tree committee has been doing to date? Are you sort of familiar with any of it? You know, I'm not incredibly familiar with it. I, I do know that there's an emerald ash borer plan mm -hmm. um, and then just working like at Maple Street. But other than that, I, I don't know specific details. It's just, it wasn't something that was on my radar sure. until really seeing the, the opportunity come up. So, That's fine. Yeah. Um, great. Well, our, our two current, two of our current members, Warren and Nick are quite the experts. Yes. So it'd be a great group. Yeah, I don't, I don't know Nick. Um, Grew up with Warren's daughter and oh. yeah, have, have <laughs> known that he was the arborist in Burlington and, and yeah. around for a long time. So awesome. Yeah, we, we're we're pretty lucky to have a deep bench in that regard. In that regard, mm -hmm. um, and it, you, you mentioned conservation. It'd be it'd be nice to sort of bring that sense of I'm not saying that's missing from their approach at all, mm -hmm. but you're right. We don't have that connection with that committee anymore, and yeah. so you know, bringing some of that viewpoint back or into that group would be great. Great. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't have anything else for you either. I appreciate you coming and waiting through the first item. Um, yeah, sure. No, that was, I, it's nice to know that I'll be getting a new road on your request. Maybe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my fire hydrant will get plugged back in. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, no. Um, I guess. Tell the insurance company. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess for my knowledge, um, what sort of commitment or uh, requirement is there being on the committee and like, I guess, expectations? from me. Well, if you want to go first. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the tree advisory committee, they meet once a month. Mm -hmm. um, they also are a pretty active committee. They um, are connected with the, um, I forget the name of the program, but we have the nursery in Burlington. And so <laughs> there are some volunteer hours <laughs> that um, the committee members do as well as they really recruit lots of other people to help with mm -hmm. um, that work over at the nursery. So we've got trees to bring into the city and plant. Um, and I think they're also, some of their meetings are a little bit more active and out in the community than just sort of sitting around here in, in the table. So it's- <laughs> Darn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a good committee, but for the most part, it's a once a month meeting mm -hmm. um, that they've got. Okay. Um, there is a stipend available. I encourage mm -hmm. people to, you know, make use of it. It's it is valuable time, okay. um, and we do appreciate it. And um, yeah, it, it is very much what people make of it. I think, and like Regina said, it's a very active, um, committed group. Um, Great. Things like you know, I, I was just reading through the development review board minutes, and you know, they're active in applications for development. Okay. They're sought out for. Um, response on applications for development and definitely provide that input and it's listened to, I think, because of the level of expertise. Great. Um, so that's 
really nice to see. Um, That's good to hear. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for coming in. Of course. We're letting you know very soon, I believe. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Um, and also just can update yep. folks. So at our last meeting, we had a number of interviews and we um, were sort of testing out who might be willing to sort of fill some seats that we didn't have enough um, applicants for. And so um, since that meeting, Luke is very much open to joining the DRB. So that's what's uh, recommended for mm -hmm. you. And also Christy is very much interested in being on the planning commission. So. Yeah. Those um, are the recommendations for you. Um, still don't have any applicants for the community advisory board. Um, and then on tree advisory, you do have two open positions with three folks who are interested. So um, have to make that decision. And uh, we're still recommending here that the bike walk advisory committee um, be reduced from eight down, down to six folks. Can we, oh, go ahead, sorry. sorry. Regina, about the community advisory board, are there vacancies from the town as well? I believe so. I, I'm not able to recall off the top of my head exactly how many. I wonder if it might be a good idea in the future to have Chief come and just talk about why the vacancies are persisting and why, why we're having trouble finding appropriate community, community members to sit on the committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just leave it I don't want it to stay stagnant. Yeah, no, it's not at all. Yeah. I do talk to people about it, and it's generally the same sort of, you know, I'm not sure, it seems charged or time. Well, you know, I'm curious if what Andrew's doing, if there's if the, the police department's doing much, you know, what, what they're doing to, to recruit as well since it's there. Right, right. Um, but I think this, this last round of, 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 <laughs> appointments seemed both excellent and deeply qualified um but sometimes it's hit or miss right sometimes we're right um and for this one it seemed to be difficult from the get-go um and it just like in looking at the cap minutes it seems like they're kind of in a holding pattern of education they're having so the charged aspect of it i don't think actually was there right. because they're just really just teaching people what the police right. do right right um, i wonder if we could reach out to one of the current members and maybe have people that might be interested but are unsure filtered to that person maybe just answer some questions yeah and wasn't there isn't there also this like training program for citizens about the police it's like a two or three month yeah, yeah that, maybe that, citizens academy yeah, that one yeah, maybe yeah. maybe people who have gone through the citizens academy might be sought out a pool that we could yeah. have yeah, that's a great point. And I think, um, you know, the the two people that were involved in getting it going, I think their year of advising is now up. It's up, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting point in, in that committee's existence. Um, yeah. And we're at, a, we're at a crossroads where it could either just kind of fade away or it needs to be reinvigorated. And I think it's our responsibility <clears throat> to reinvigorate. reinvigorate. Yeah, and, and look, if it, you know, we were very adamant that we have a, an equal representation between the two communities. Um, yeah. And if that's not, um, I mean, we share the police department and we're not so disparate that we're like these strange neighbors. So if that's not gonna quite work out, I'm happy to revisit that breakdown of where folks are from. So, you know, it's four and two or it's, five and one or whatever, yeah. you know, it's serving the same police department and essentially the same community. You know, they're responding to both places. So the inner the interaction there and the conversations benefit us regardless of where it would be nice if we were, but it's, I think right now for me, it's more important that it's populated than where, yeah. you know, it's, no, how the representation number breaks down. Yep. Um, so yeah, so if there's anything in there, you know, be interested in their feedback on that. If they think that might help, if there just is more interest, I, I doubt it, but there could be. Um, it might just be a case of us needing to call more attention to it, yeah. more actively recruit. Right. Mm -hmm. And so to this question of, um, we're gonna have an executive session later and talk about the appointments we're going to make, but we can probably take care of the bike walk committee membership size now. 
um, if folks are amenable. Um, sure. I don't know if there's any further discussion that's required on that. We all sort of get it. Um, so I'll just go ahead and move that the Bike Walk Advisory Committee membership be reduced from eight to six. I'll second. Great. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Great, motion passes. Um, and the rest of that item will be dealt with in executive session and after. So that brings us to uh, discussion and consideration of community vision and strategic action plan. And we have joining us Ashley Snellenberger. We're very excited to hear what you've got for us tonight and this conversation. For having me tonight. So I am going to share my screen and um, so I have a little bitty PowerPoint tonight. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about um, three important items. Um, the first off is we do have the final version of the Community Vision and Strategic Action Plan report that was produced by Future IQ. Um, this has the addition of the um, action items that have been prioritized. We did a survey trying to prioritize those items. And so that has been included. Uh, when David did the presentation for you guys back in June, he went over a preliminary um, uh, prioritization of those action items. Um, we now have those in that final version. And you guys have that in your packet for you guys to view. We'll go over that a little bit. We're also going to talk about department work plans and what that's going to look like. And then we're going to merge into something that Regina and I are calling the list. Um, and so mm -hmm. we'll get into that a little bit more. So first off, the strategic action plan report. As you guys know, um, we, if I can get it to move, hang on. There we go. Um, so in you guys, when you saw the report uh, in June, we did go over the top pillars, but I wanted to bring those back to everybody's attention. Um, the top three pillars that came out of um, the prioritization for the pillars were housing and urban design, economic and business development, and public services and facilities. Uh, following that, like I said, we did prioritize the top action items. Um, if you look at this little bit, this graph um, on the screen, anything towards the left of the graph is what we're supposed to implement first. Anything on the right is, is something that we'd implement last. Um, so out of that prioritization survey, the top action items included provide responsible, open and transparent government, enhance downtown and quarters, and promote and enhance safety. So uh, tonight we do have a recommendation for the council to um, approve this report that's as presented um, by Future IQ, unless that you guys have changes that need to be made. Okay, so moving on, let's talk departmental head work plan. So this is our next step in the strategic planning process. Uh, the department head work plans is something that uh, we wanted to do as a way to take the work that we're already doing, that day-to-day -day work, and align it with the community vision and strategic action plan and the budget. So the work planning is a way for us to coordinate the work that needs to be done with an emphasis on continuing that improvement and innovation within our city. So the department heads are currently working on um, their plans right now. Um, it is going to be a two-year plan. So the plan that we are currently in, FY25, and then it will include FY26 to align with the FY26 budget that we're preparing for. Um, it will include things that they are currently doing, some improvements um, to accomplish in the next fiscal year, and then evaluation methods um, that they will use to report back on their accomplishments um, throughout the year. So I'm going to show you an example of one page of my communication uh, plan. Uh, so as you can see from the top, we have a goal that's aligned with our pillar and our action item. Then underneath that, we have our action items. These are the things we want to do that's improvements to our department. For FY25, we're using the goals that um, they put in the budget documents that we did um, last year. So those will be their um, action items for FY25. 
and then they're to add an, uh, an action item or more for uh, FY26. You'll see that there's a timeline associated with that with the fiscal year. We do have budget resources where if they have an allocation for specific parts of the budget, um, it needs to go in there and who's responsible for it. After that, we have the current or ongoing work that the departments are already doing. We didn't want it to just be a plan that's all this new stuff. We also wanted to bring to the table what our departments are doing because they've got a lot of stuff going on um, every day. And so this is where their current work that aligns with whatever th their goals will be. And that timeline, it goes from daily to yearly or as needed. Budget resources are aligned as well. And then who's responsible. And at the very bottom is the evaluation methods. Those are not all my evaluation methods for this goal. It carries on to the next page. Uh, but they'll also have their evaluation methods, and that's what they'll use to kind of gauge their progress um, on this action plan and how they've moved that goal forward. You move it along. On to the list. So uh, this list started uh, with, by Regina. It was something that she started since she got here, um, and so it was when she started collecting things that came from the council, the community members and the staff and started just putting together this, wouldn't it be great list? Um, and so we looked at this um, and said, we need to really start prioritizing this within the pillars, the action items in the fiscal year. And so what you have in the packet is one that's been broken down. We, we added the, the pillars and the action items to all of these different project lists. And then we tried to assign a fiscal year. It's very, very, very preliminary on that fiscal year, um, mainly because we don't have our department head work plans yet. And that's going, uh, we feel that there's things that we're missing from that the department head work plans will give us um, information on and we'll be able to add that in there, which will probably adjust that fiscal year. Um, and so we are bringing this list to you mainly as to give you an overview of this list and to introduce you to this list. By no means is this list final or um, it's very preliminary, like I've been saying. So a few more caveats. Again, very I feel preliminary. Like, I feel like we need 20 minutes of caveats, Ashley, <laughs> just, to, just to protect. I'm just feeling like it's sort of Pavlovian. Oh my God, it's a list. Let's, sorry. <laughs> It's a big list and uh, Regina and I have had a lot of discussions about this list. Let's just, it's it's been a lot of discussions and how we use this list and carry it into the strategic plan. Uh, so again, preliminary list, we're gonna be waking on those department head work plans to come. Um, this also, this list isn't gonna be set in stone. So once we have gotten uh, our hands on it and kind of gotten a good grip on it, you guys will have a chance to look at it. There'll something be something that we evaluate yearly based off of the progress that we do with the work plans. Um, we might look at things and say, we didn't accomplish this big project um, or we had to push this project back because we didn't have the funding for it. So now we need to adjust other projects based off of that. So again, it's it will be something that we look at every year as we move forward with this. Um, we do have asterisks next to the pillar action items that are priorities so that you guys know which ones um, are associated with priority items. Um, again, like I said, we broke these down to um, pillars and action items in fiscal year. And so we might wanna look at things and decide how we're going to prioritize that. Is it most important for you guys to be pillars? Is it most important for action items? Is it most important for fiscal year? Um, and then we need to look and see what we've already committed ourselves to, like the GRP master plan. Um, so we, those will obviously rise to the top because we've already committed ourselves to them. And then we'll need to look at this and say, is there anything that should or could be removed or pushed to a later date? Um, we already touched on the fiscal year is extremely preliminary. Uh, we'll um, add, like I said, projects on that, that that are on the list based off of those work plans. And then FY30 is stand in for future. So we tried to make this a five-year plan, um, but obviously there's some gonna be things that are moved even farther than that. So I just know that FY30 doesn't necessarily mean FY30. Okay, timeline for the work plans and our future plans. So from now until September, um, I'm gonna be working with the department heads to develop their work plan. So we're set up some meetings 
um, with them and we'll be going through their work plans and trying to help them flesh out their work plans um, because it's a different way of thinking for people. Um, and I want this to be something that's functional for the, the department heads to use and the council to use. Um, they'll give those to me in September along with the budget to Jess. And then we'll look over those and uh, work with them to finalize their budgets and their work plans together. And then we'll be presenting both of those documents to you in November, December, along with your budget day. And then in April, May, sometime in the spring, we hope to have our council and department head retreat. This will be an opportunity for us to report out those accomplishments that we accomplished in FY25, because that's the year that we're in. So again, our work plans are FY25 is what we're working on currently right now. And you will report out after the end of F, or towards the end of FY25 of those accomplishments. And then we'll move into FY26. All of this stuff is supposed to help us always build for the next year. So at this retreat, we hope to go over what our progress was, what worked, what didn't work, what we need to adjust, and then get our priorities from you guys to move forward into the next fiscal year and our next round of work plans. So finally, uh, our recommendations, again, like I said, we are asking you to approve the Community Vision and Strategic Action Plan report as it has been presented. And then we want to get some high level feedback on this list. Um, we don't want to really get in the weeds tonight. We just want to get in some high level thoughts from you guys and see if there's any issues that we really need to address before we ask, start adding in those departmental work plans and then bringing this strategic plan list back to you guys. Regina, is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, we've had lots of conversations about this, so I want to leave it <laughs> also to you as well. <laughs> I think that was awesome, Ashley. So thank you. I don't yeah. have anything to add right now. That was wonderfully complete and yet concise. So <laughs> there's, Regina I, and I have also talked about the, the opportunity for this to go completely off the rails. <laughs> um, <laughs> But as it's been pointed out tonight, we're one short. So um, a couple, I think I'll just start. I, I had a couple brief questions about the report and they're really nitpicky minor. So, but um, but they caught my eye. Otherwise I think it's, it. I understand it. I've been over it a lot. Um, one of them is just this concept of, um, and it's really nitpicky. Amber's gonna slap me when she sees me, but like, um, Funding fire, police, and rescue at their current levels, as is mentioned three or four times throughout this report. And I don't think we want to do that. I think that's not quite what they're saying. It's what it says would mean that we cut them every year. What I think they mean is to provide at minimum. So I would almost rephrase that because I think the intention is to say to continue to provide um at minimum what we're providing now for those entities not keep it at current levels um I, it's a it sounds like a semantic but um it just struck me every time i saw it and it is in here a few times so um other than that i like it could you talk a little bit could, it, it i know i took the survey and it gave me pause the very last survey where we we looked at prioritizing what we wanted to start with first after we looked at the pillars. I think it can be difficult for folks to get their head around because there is some disconnect there, you know, in terms of the action items that come first versus the pillars that are prioritized, you know, like open and transparent government by a long shot uh, is curious to me in the first place um, until I read how it's defined, but it's way in the front of what we're gonna do first, even though the discussion and the narrative behind the housing and everything else seems much more deep and important to people. You know what I mean? So if you could talk about like how that goes together and how we're going to bring this forward, um, you know, that difference between like what we do first and when versus how they were prioritized. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it does. I So the good thing about it is the prior, the top three prioritization is actually does fall in the top three pillars. So we do have some core, some breakover or, or not breakover, but uh, toss over between the two. It's not mm -hmm. that we have one pillar that's 
this and then an action item that's not one of those top pillars. So I, I was happy to see that we did have those, um, that people were combining those two different things. Um, I think that, you know, when we look at this, these are very high level, big items. Um, they're not, it's not so specific that we're going to do, you know, open and transparent government means that we're going to, um, you know, communicate more. And that's not just the the diff, the wording there. Um, I think that we're, when we look at this, we're obviously going to look also about what's coming out of our work plans too and seeing I, a lot of this this first year is us figuring out how we're going to work this all together. Um, and I hate, to, I hate to say that, but we've not done this before. And so a lot of it is going to be um, how it works best for our community to move this forward. And so when I think about like our work plans, I feel like those are moving our actions and our pillars forward each time. And these are the, the pillars and the action items that came first. These are the things that over the next five years that we want to try to focus on, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to do the other ones. And it doesn't mean that like if we get to next year and let's like say something horrible happened and we had another pandemic, let's just say, knock on wood, um, our priorities might shift and change because of what's going on in our environment. And so we might have every year we're going to be editing and flowing and we, what our priority items might be this year might be different next year. And as a council, that's going to be up to you guys to help guide us as a staff on where those priorities are. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Thank you. <laughs> Can I just add sorry, yeah. for um, yeah, yeah, yeah. one um, actually just reminded me of one thing I did want to say, and I um, see John and Diane here. Um, so what we have yet to sort of sort through is where and at what point we're also working in the committee feedback to this. And so that is definitely very much something we've got on our minds and how we how we kind of think through that and communicate that both in terms of kind of bringing input up to the council to help in your decision-making and, and also sort of sending that back down once the priorities and strategies are, are sorted out and made. Um, and a, a lot of that will also sort of shake out in the department work plans that are associated with those various committees and their work as well. Yeah, because I, I was thinking, you know, too, um, you know, we, we still need to get those groups together with us. We still need to get the three that you mentioned yeah. together um, and really sort of digest the work plans, the strategic plan, the list, you know, hear about the challenges each group is having. Um, you know, yeah, that's still, still very much needs to be done. Yeah. Um, Amber, did you have anything? No, Elaine? I'm, I'm, Still digesting. Okay. It's been a very busy week. Um, just I'm curious about some of the timing. And I kind of felt the ranking of government transparency so high was possibly a function of the times we're in at the moment. Mm -hmm and not necessarily an indication that the city is falling down on this item. And so if I, and if I can interject just for me, because the way I interpreted it was, if we look at housing and urban development and how that would come through and the people that weren't paying attention turned around and all of a sudden there's a four story building over here, you know? So it'd be the information of getting that out and and looking for feedback from people before they just turn around. And so I took a, a larger approach to the whole thing to say, while well, we're doing X, in, we keep in mind Y. And I don't think it's a shot across the bow at any, anything to, for Essex Junction, or as you said, that they were falling down. Uh, I think it's just one of those things that we include as we work through things and uh, it just keep it on the forefront to say, you know, hey, here we are. This is what we're looking at doing. Here's what we're thinking about doing. And and uh, what is your feedback before we get through all of that? I think, Tim, before you joined the council, 
um, I had sent around to Regina and Ashley and the council um, a model communications plan that was developed by the city of Portland, Oregon. It was called, I think it's called the Portland Participation Plan. And I, we talked about it a couple times briefly. Um, that does what you're talking about, yeah. Tim. So I was looking, when you showed your example, Ashley, of your own work plan, I thought of the Portland plan and thought like, are we going to incorporate that? And, and where will we see it? And how will we see it in action? And so um, that was the weedy piece of what I yeah. resisted. <laughs> I tried to resist and I couldn't. Well, you know, <coughs> I it, did, couldn't. it did come up when we heard two meeting, a meeting or two ago when we heard from CDE, right? We approved using that rubric and some of that um, decision-making, yeah. uh, some of those tools yeah. in how we handle big decisions. And well, first of all, how we determine the size of the decision we're dealing yeah, with, exactly. right? And then, so if then, what is our engagement going to be? Right. And that being an aspect of the work plans, perhaps, or or maybe an appendix to then, you know, like, so where does this project land on that? Right. And, Each work and, plan should right. talk about how they're going to outreach to the community. Right. Right. Yeah. If, it, and if it's required. And so with that particular decision, I did ask out loud at the end of that conversation for CD, you know, this feels like one of those decisions we committed in September, Yeah, you know, and so that can also have the impact of, of then bringing a capacity question to the table Yeah, in terms of where that decision, where that project then lands is that so, so getting our heads around, yes, we can do this now, but wait, because well, it also, you know, included in that effort will be likely more staff or council or other time in that outreach but I think the purpose of that rubric is to give all staff members, department heads especially, the ability to prioritize how they're going to communicate mm -hmm. so that everything doesn't become a massive community participation project right. and then everything gets slowed. Right. Down. Yes. And yeah, and, and we, we've developed these channels over time right. where it becomes more streamlined and people are aware of how we can communicate, how they can interact, we have their information. Yeah. And that that two way yeah. is this much smoother. And I, yeah. I think the other thing I wanted to point out was um, I had you recall I talked about doing online Zooms with some economic development yeah. folks, and we held two Zooms, and I sent out links to the conversations to all of the folks who were interested. And I'm seeing on here opportunities for um, economic development downtown community engagement and like some of it all goes together and um, the conversation or in, in the where does it say here oh yeah uh, downtown or economic development committee future after transit oriented design project Amtrak and Main Street Park projects are complete or mostly underway that's a really long time <laughs> so uh, I'm glad that it says unless a volunteer effort wants to start sooner. Right. I do think there is people, there are people out there who want to start some sort of volunteer downtown organization. So I would love for us to, at some point in the very near future, um, discuss what that might look like. I think that's, I, I agree. I think that's a conversation worth having and we have to, we'll have to weigh what that looks like compared to the commitments that we already have for yep. committees and staff. Absolutely. And we have the, Rec advisory we've committed to for quite a while, and yep. in addition to the charter uh, required um, governance. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we can't let the um, can't let the can just wait on the economic development. So we'll have to figure that out. Um, part of my thinking on that just um, it's probably obvious, but um, all three of those projects will definitely help bring energy mm -hmm. and. Um, address some very sore parts of the downtown and village center that I think are fairly desperate and in need of um, help. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I think uh, downtown committee slash economic development, those can mean lots and lots of different things, but um, in terms of just really trying to help the vibrancy and, of the village and the downtown, I think those those three things will help achieve some of that. And build energy. And build energy. And we are committed to all of them already. 
I think I think what when I go through when I think about this list or when I talk to Regina sometimes about this list the thing that is always in my head and the worry I have is always just capacity. Yeah. You know, and it's it's um, and so I every for every I think thing I give you or I suggest or I email there's probably five others that I don't dare. Um, they're just waiting. They're yeah. on my list. Um, I'm sure others do something similar. Um, and it is the reason why Ashley did an excellent job. Um, caveating so well um, <laughs> all of our concerns because this um, really a missing component is what we're attempting to do here kind of big picture is help try to better explain um, the day-to-day -day work and what actual capacity we have if any on top of that right. and then when we have a better handle on that we can kind of look through this list you know those fiscal years me on my own think this is roughly <laughs> yeah and they're really a comparison of one over the other as opposed to true indications that that's going to be a real accurate time frame think, without knowing what that full work plans from the departments look like yet i think one of the things that excites me the most about this is the fact that we can over time we'll get to a point where we can point to this right um and when people ask questions about the budget We'll have so much deep information to say, um, this is what's been accomplished. This is what the money went to. This is how we're measuring it. What do you think? What do you think that result has been? Kind of the participatory, not participatory. Yeah. Um, term performance. Performance based budget. You know, if we can. So you know, getting ourselves from between now and let's say five or six years from now mm -hmm. um, to a point where it's real. I mean, when people talk about transparency, this is just such a great example of. Um, idea comes in, there's a process for it, it gets baked into this, there's a budget tie back to it that people can see, there's a metric, there's an evaluation to it. And um, it's just a, a completely different way to be able to, to understand what a community is doing and spending, I think, and prioritizing, I think. So I think this is great. Um, and I'm really resisting getting into the weeds. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, and <laughs> And there's so much information here. Uh, the, the, the this process has just been something that I don't think I really appreciated how how deep it went and how much information has come out of it and how that has, that raw data has been turned into actionable information. And for those who haven't looked, this list that they keep referring to with very tentative fiscal years. <laughs> that can be moved at any point in time where <laughs> FY30 means that it's off in the future is already five and a half pages long. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a massive, massive list. And so really for me, thank you very much for all of your efforts that have gone into this. Uh, the way it's presented out made it really, really, really easy to understand. And uh, coming into this new, uh, you know, I did attend some of the information in the in the think tank stuff. Uh, I really appreciate the way that this has been disseminated. Thank you. Um, I think Amber said she didn't have anything. Um, <clears throat> and if that's still the case, um, is there anything else, Regina, or anything from board members? No? Ashley, anything else? Um, doesn't sound like it. I know Diane in the audience had a comment she wanted to make. So if you I'm coming up to the table. Oh, it was a nice report. Um, I was encouraged by seeing the list um, because it's not a plan until it actually has actionable items. So I'm encouraged that you're going to have department heads flesh things out. I, as I was reading things, I went, some of these things are already done but that's just me, I'm in the planning department. Um, and I noticed a lot of things were kind of put on our plate, eventually speaking from that point. Um, uh, my colleagues made me the chair the other day. So um, I kind of felt somewhat responsible here to say, um, by the way, we are in fiscal 25 and two years from now is gonna be fiscal 27. So telling me that we're gonna start something in fiscal 26 for, no, 
No, sorry. Comprehensive plan starts soon. Okay, because it has a timeline that it supersedes what you think guys would have. We now are dealing with some legislative law things. Um, and if how this dovetails with a comprehensive plan um, should be looked at um, because some of those things are already sh should be in the works regardless because we committed to them. Um, and how many have we gotten done and where are we going? So that's also part of planning. Um, except we wrote that down and said we, we have it done by 2027. 20, um, so, you know, I would commend you on, on putting the report together. I mean, it reads well. Uh, it's nice to see the public comments. Uh, tells me how much um, the community is not aware of the things that already occur, that already exist, but that just means we need to tell them that we already have maps and all this other stuff. They just need to ask for them and we need to provide them. Um, so it's you know, like, did you know that there's a walking map of Essex Junction? There's actually routes. I actually live on one. I didn't know until I picked up a copy of it at the Brownell Library. So um, that's just a matter of putting it either on the website or printing more of those little pocket guides. Um, so it's, hey, it's what we decide to do as, as government. What do we want to encourage? Um, so those things exist. I'm sure that Ashley was not aware that that walking map exists. Um, and, uh, but there's a lot of stuff there. So, um, but I think we need to find out ourselves uh, what, what exa or exists that we can disseminate and not reinvent the wheel because it's already been invented and, and move forward from there. Um, but I look forward to speaking you know, with you guys at some point in time as the planning commission and, and, and John and, and the rest of there and DRB, um, especially after some comments where people are, nice that they made the comments, but it would have been nice to have had them come visit with us and talk to us about some of the things they're concerned about. And when it comes to the planning commission and that sort of thing. So it's, uh, work in progress, we can always move forward and get better at it. So that's, so not to, to get in the weeds, but I'm going to get in the weeds about fiscal years. So, um, because the clock's ticking and it all depends on how long you guys take to look at whatever we come up with. And <laughs> last time we got close to, too close to the wire. So, and we're gonna have more edits to come with you for the land development code. Those should be coming and they have their own little timeline going on. So not, not to you know, dissuade you from stuff, but there's a lot of stuff coming down the pike that isn't in that plan. <laughs> so okay. thank you for listening. Sure, thanks. thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what I know about planning. <laughs> uh, John, Alden, online. All right. Good to see everybody tonight. Uh, Diane, yeah. it sounds like you're going to be busy for the next couple of years. I think the timing's perfect. It's like shuffling a deck of cards. You got actually doing one shuffle and you doing the other. So for me, it's perfect. You let you all let us know when you're done and we'll take care of the rest. Um, I, I just wanted to point out a couple of things. We um, I was a member of a downtown steering committee. I don't know, it's probably 10 years ago now. And we had, you know, a lot of business owners and, and other interested parties. And I think that effort culminated in the designation of our village center uh, at the state level. But um, I will turn over my entire three inch binder to somebody and you can uh, comb through that and uh, make sure that we do have all the things that have already been done and the efforts that we've already uh, gone through, uh, you know, well documented, and we can pick up where we left off. Um, and I will also uh, caution after maybe 10 years as a member, uh, founding member of the heart and soul effort, that capacity and and clarity are kind of like the two major issues. And so I appreciate what people have said about that already. Um, 
it's hard not to bite off more than you can chew. And once you've developed all that information, the ability to clearly disseminate it back out in a strategic and recognizable way is super important. So super, uh, nice job on doing that so far. Thanks, John. I'd love to see that binder, John. <laughs> I'll bring it down tomorrow. <laughs> Make a copy just in case she may not get it back. <laughs> That's my plan. <laughs> he doesn't want it back. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, he doesn't want it back, right? Yeah, I, you know, I think based on those two comments, I think one one thing is also kind of just reminded me that, you know, this question of capacity and priorities and everything. You know, when we go to the community around budget time, and you know, we've heard from them, we, we'd like to get this, this, and this done, and we say, okay, we can do X, Y. Z might be this much more or might require this. I mean, it, you know, this is gonna be a great opportunity to kind of have those conversations and show people, you know, try to figure out with them what their, how priority is priority, you know, I mean, basically in tax time, you know, if, if there's, if, if we read full bore on the economic development and housing thing, and we decide, I'm just making this up. I'm not even gonna make anything up, forget it, it's too dangerous. Um, it just helps us a budget time work with folks with what we might propose and, and help us explain it, so. Um, in terms of, I don't see anybody else on Zoom. Let me just make sure I can see any other hands. In terms of what we need from this, we need to approve, if we feel like doing that, um, the Community Vision and Strategic Action Plan report. That's okay, um, Annie, raise your hand. Uh, Annie Cooper online. Hi, thanks for letting me talk. I couldn't find the button. Um, hi, uh, I'm so excited about how hard uh, Ashley has worked and how thorough this strategic action plan is. I applaud the fact that I see that the governance committee or, or, or whatever you I'm sorry, I can't remember the name I saw in the packet of the rec committee I've been watching on YouTube. Um, and I'm so glad that's in there. And I so appreciate and value the hard work y'all are doing. And I just want to echo a little bit, a little bit of what Diane said and a little bit of what um, John Alden said. And I mean this with care and kindness. So please hear me, hear me from that space. Please be careful that we don't get back on a hamster wheel that we've been on before with all the, uh, the, the ingestion of what people want and then the corresponding output to community We've, we've done all this, right? We've done all this countless times before. I get it that this is different. We're renovating to Lincoln. I get all the differences, but I'm imploring you, I guess, to keep your eyes on the, on the prize on the ball because that government transparency, I don't think is just because people are just saying it. I think they really want it. And you are all good people. I know you're good people. You know you're good people. And I really want this to work this time around. I really want us to, follow it through. I know that's Ashley's plan and I'm sure it's yours. So if you don't mind that I might occasionally come in and like tap a table and say, Hey, you guys don't forget this or don't forget that because I really want to see us get off that hamster wheel and grow forward. And I'm really excited about it because we've, we've been in this game a long time, all of us. I mean, the whole community, I don't just mean us together as people and thank you for your time. And thanks for letting me talk. Thanks, Danny. All right. So I don't see anybody else there. Um, so sounds like the group the council's open to approving this. So if there's a motion on pack page nine, someone wants to. Uh, read I it. move that the city council approve the community vision and strategic action plan report to help guide the work plan prioritization over the coming years. Second. Great. Um, does it look like there's any. Just Can Sorry, just a question on the motion. Um, do you want us, uh, does the council want us to edit that language as Raj described earlier? I, did that make sense or was that too semantic? Was that too minor? It was it basically- did, It did make sense. Um, I don't know that you need, do, do you need to re reword the report itself or do we just need to have that understanding? That's, I guess, the question. Um, I think you, we collectively have the understanding. Uh, it's for future. I mean, it's for 
future folks to yeah. follow. I mean, it's, it seems silly not to change it. Right. Okay. I don't know how hard it is to change. So Ashley and Regina, I'll ask your feedback. Like, I, I was opening that by and admitting that that's probably very much in the weeds. I just. It's not hard to change. If it's something that you guys want changed, I can go back to Future IQ, ask them to specifically put in a sentence about that to make those changes. They'll get it back to me. Um, and if you guys are good, once those changes have been made, um, they'll give me a final report and we can be done with it if that's yeah, how you guys I, want to move forward. I, I think we can approve it tonight as amended. And I trust that you both understand the intent and we can just move from there so we don't delay this anymore. That's acceptable. All right, so if you'd um, uh, just um, put amend, as, as amended. Amend the motion <laughs> to move that the city council approve the amended community vision and strategic action plan report to help guide the work plan prioritization over the coming years. Second. Great. Um, hearing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you very much, Thank Ashley. You, Ashley. Appreciate it. Ken Regina. Awesome. Discussion and consideration, uh, item 565D, discussion and consideration of FY25 tax rate. Yes. Uh, I can't see. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> With a much more mundane and boring topic than Ashley had. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, so if you'll recall back to budget time, the city uh, voters approved the city budget um, with $11,110,346 to be raised in property tax revenue. Um, at the time, uh, at budget time, we calculated or estimated that the tax rate would come in at 0 0.9807. Um, the good news is there was a very, very slight increase in the grand list um, of the of 0.64%. Um, so the tax rate is actually coming in a little tiny bit lower at 0.9742. Um, and as you kind of scroll down through the memo in the chart at the bottom, um, you'll see that there are in addition to the general fund tax rate, there is also a tax agreement rate. So this was also voted on and approved uh, this spring for uh, veterans exemptions above what the state automatically allows. Uh, the city is responsible for coming up with the education portion of those um, tax agreements or exemptions rather. And then we also have the approved, voted and approved economic development rate of a penny. Um, so that is remains unchanged from the prior year. The total tax rate, city tax rate is coming in at five, or sorry, is coming in 5.9% um, higher than FY24, which is exactly what we projected during budget time. Um, so the estimated tax increase on a $280,000 property will be about $153 per year, again, just on the city um, portion of your tax bill. Great. Thank you, Joss. Yep. Regina, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? I do not have anything okay. to add. Any questions from counselors? No. No. Clear. Great. Um, I do not have any questions. I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, anyone in the audience in the room that has anything they'd like to discuss? Anyone online on Zoom that has any questions or comments on this budget item? Not seeing any hands raised. We'll give it another few seconds. I guess I do have one question. Now that we've set the tax rate, when should folks expect to see their Property tax bills. Yep. Which are so due we number fifteen, right? Yes. So we are. We have our um, appointment set with Nemric, who is the software company that we use for all of our accounting functions. Um, they, the finance team, will be working with them on August seventh to prepare, calculate, and produce the bills. They'll head off to the printer from there. Um, so should be hitting people's mailboxes prior to the 15th, which is the drop dead date. The state requires that they must be mailed by August 15th, postmarked by August 15th. 
um, with the first payment being due on September 15th. Okay, got it, thank you. I am not seeing anyone with any hands raised on Zoom, so I will entertain the motion on packet page 54 or make it myself. I move that the city council approve the FY25 tax rate as presented. Second. Great. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Thanks. All right. 5E, 2024 legislative update. And I think we have a special guests tonight. Our representatives, Karen Dolan and Lori Houghton are joining us. Okay, so um, I'm gonna pull up this presentation, but I'm not really gonna go through it in detail. <laughs> <laughs> um, just give me a second here. Make sure I can... Karen and Lori, thank you for sticking with us to the meeting. Glad to be here. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. So I put this presentation together um, a couple of weeks ago, um, and this has been in the packet since um, Friday. Uh, it, um, I imagine, Lori and Karen are still exhausted. This was quite the year yeah. of <laughs> of bills coming out of the session. So, um, and there are quite a number of things that have an impact on um, municipalities. So um, I have identified the things that I think are kind of really um, the big ones. There are a lot of other little ones too, and we will continue to keep posted. Uh, the LCT has been doing an awesome job um, keeping all of us posted and keeping us up to speed as we kind of move along. Um, and we have already put some of the things that um, we're now required to do in, in place. So um, I'll start at the top here, uh, open meeting law. There are some um, kind of structural uh, things that have been established under the new open meeting law um, where uh, committees are defined as a, uh, advisory committees or non-advisory committees. Um, essentially non-advisory are you folks, all folks who deal with budget stuff, legislative stuff, um, and uh, um, advisory um, are folks that really are here to advise you on the direction and the action that you take um, for the city. Um, depending on which bucket committees are in, um, there's a requirement that depends on what type of meeting you can hold, whether hybrid, in-person, or um, uh, virtual. Um, important thing for council to know, we can no longer hold virtual only meetings. Um, and for also important thing to understand for uh, non-advisory boards are, there is now a recording requirement that has to be posted on the website. Um, so we will be following all of that. Um, and there are also some other things in there, like uh, if there is, if somebody um, out in the community feels that there's a violation of some kind against the open meeting law, uh, we now have on our website how to go about making that complaint, if there is a complaint and how, um, how to address that. Um, Code of ethics. Can I ask a question yeah, before we? Yeah, yeah, let's do it so, bit by bit. Yeah. On the open meeting law requirement that non-advisory bodies have to record, um, I know that we pay CCTV to record these meetings and I think planning commission meetings? DRB meetings. DRB meetings. Oh. So we do not record the BCA meetings or the library trustees. So is this a budgetary impact for us? We have to invest more in recording and then in storage? So our um, the recording requirement um, can be done through Zoom. Uh, and so essentially we will on our website link, so we don't necessarily need Town Meeting TV to step in and do those meetings that they're not doing right now. Um, we can use Zoom and put that link up on the website and the um, data does live in our Zoom account. 
Yeah. It, so it won't be a budgetary issue for our website, but it will potentially over time be a budgetary issue for our Zoom account if we have to increase capacity. Well, yeah, they don't, they don't, they yeah. allow you to keep certain recordings for a certain length of time, but then you have to get rid of them. So maybe a yeah. YouTube channel is a better. Yeah. And I, you know, um, appreciate certainly town meeting and because the big what they do is they're archiving for yeah, us exactly. long term. Um, to be clear, the open meeting law requirement is that these recordings are posted for 30 days. Yeah. That's the requirement. Um, so I think we can always certainly have a discussion about whether we want to do something above and beyond that. Or could um, but that's the requirement. And we can, I think we can meet that. And we could just sure. download the Zoom meetings, send them to CCTV, and then they would tag them as Essex Junction and archive them. Is there a Am fee I for that? correct Bobby? about that, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. But yes, there, there is yeah. a fee. Yeah, and I, I'd like to but compare- But it's not a recording fee. Like, like No, no, I understand. But less. I'd like to, you know, if we're gonna do that, I'd like to explore what storage would be from our web vendor, from uh, our IT vendor and versus- oh, It's free on versus. It's not free on what? YouTube. Uh, it but, would but be considered a business account. Right. But then yeah. you have two different places for residents to go to find information. And that's not what they need. Well, we'd, it'd all still be linked. But yeah, I mean, I, it is worth a conversation in terms of, or hearing what staff think in terms of, you know, meeting the, the letter of the law at 30 days or, um, or at minimum saving them in our own server so that if somebody requested it, we could provide it somehow like you know the zoom will cut you off after a certain threshold so they will have to be downloaded or deleted but um we have options i just can't imagine the value of holding on to a video for 30 days the whole point of archiving these things yeah. no is I, to archive I, them. I agree especially with brief minutes you know like right you know right. um Thank you, that's just a question. Okay. Um, so let me just pick up on this slide here. Did it adjust for me? I'm hoping this is gonna work. Nope. Did we break it? It's just a bit of a lag. Uh, I'll try to talk slow, but the slide, there we go. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> the uh, other thing I just wanted to point out here on this slide is VLCT, Secretary of State's Office, and Vermont School Boards Association created a set of FAQs. Um, that's really pretty helpful in um, sorting, sorting this out. Um, Okay, so code of ethics. Um, so essentially, um, we, um, as of January 1, 2025, we will need to adopt the uh, new municipal uniform code of municipal ethics that is um, stated uh, quite specifically within state statute itself. Um, so we will be, um, working to get that done. Uh, one thing to point out is that our current conflict of interest and ethics policy covers all staff. Um, state statute doesn't necessarily cover all staff and I would assume that we will have a conversation about it that we wanna um, have it cover all staff. So um, we will be taking more of a look at that. There is a lot more in here. There's uh, required training, um, and a lot of this will be sort of put together by um, the state and uh, we will get all of that incorporated. Um, there is now a new whistleblower protection um, for municipal employees. We will make sure to get that into the personnel policy. Um, and yep, so there's the note about um, covering all staff and uh, just pointing out here that our um, charter does have some language, so we will um, get this all clear and sort it out. Um, just 
note here at the bottom, it's the state ethics commission that's really got the authority here in terms of guidance and advice to municipalities. So that's who uh, we will be working with um, going forward to get um, all this sorted out. Cannabis. Um, so this um, bill, um, establishes a method for municipalities to create minimum setback requirements for outdoor cannabis cultivators. Um, so as a, um, just a reminder to folks, um, prior legislative session, could be two legislative sessions ago, I'm forgetting in my mind, outdoor cannabis cultivation was sort of uh, some changes were made there to um, uh, limit a mun municipal authority over outdoor cannabis cultivation. This sort of goes back uh, in a little bit of a direction, sort of acknowledging that in some more urban, um, more densely populated areas, this can be really a difficult challenge. Um, so we will be looking at this further. Um, the different districts uh, take effect January 1, 2025. Um, we will be looking at this in more detail um, to follow up and see if there are changes that we should make. Uh, just a little bit more detail on um, that information. Um, and we'll have to, we'll think through whether to set up a cannabis cultivation district or, or not. Yeah, this was an interesting last minute kind of compromise that in a way doing nothing gets us closer to our original ask. So that will be interesting conversation to have about, because there's also a study committee now. Yes, um, thank you for- Looking for the next legislative biennium. Um, yeah, I think, I think the, um, I think all, there is a study committee that will take a look at this from a broader perspective get some input from lots of different folks to sort of sort through uh, what's the right long-term solution for addressing outdoor cannabis cultivation for issues like this. So um, we will stay tuned. Libraries, um, there uh, was a library bill that came out this year, S220. Um, one of the things that I know the libraries working through over there to try to figure out how to switch up the databases and sort this out is um, what age, the age up to which custodial parents or guardians have access to their child's library records from age 16 down to 12. So um, there's that, there's a number of other different things in there. Um, it also does, um, add some clarification uh, regarding municipal library director and um, under the supervision and control of the library board of trustees, unless another relationship is otherwise specified in the charter. Um, so we uh, will be looking at that further, but um, I think our charter is really pretty clear on that already. Um, all library staff, including the library director is uh, an employee of the city. Um, housing permit and reform. So this bill, I don't know if it's one of the longest bills in <laughs> the <laughs> history of bills. Did you, did you read it all? I did not even okay. come okay. close. <laughs> um, and really, I am not, I'm not going to go into this in too much detail. I sort of just put in some of the highlights in here. But um, so really big picture to kind of understand here. Last year, um, the legislative changes uh, that came forward to try to really help us address this housing crisis that we are in um, looked quite a bit at the municipal zoning level. This really looks quite a bit more at um, the state and Act 250 level, and kind of the whole structure and system that has sort of built that um, to today. So um, 
there's a lot that will come out of this eventually, um, but there's a lot on the regional plans, um, regional planning commission's plate of um, reworking some of the regional maps and that will um, have some impact on us and how this all comes together, both in terms of um, promoting more housing um, and really I'll say uh, the intent and the thought behind this for quite some time has been Act 250 is based on some threshold numbers that are absent any kind of geographic location on the ground. So um, if you build 10 or more houses, it doesn't matter whether you're right here or you're um, in the middle of um, a rural community, you're gonna go to Act 250 just because of that size. There's been some shifts and adjustments over the years to contemplate that the designated centers have a little bit of a different parameter, which is why we live under a different parameter right now here in Essex Junction. Um, but really that this whole new system is intended to really take a look at that. Geographically, Act 250 is in place to protect um, our environment and there are trying to get to a place where development should happen because that's where we've intentionally said growth should happen. That's kind of the idea. There's a whole heck of a lot in here, um, including lots of uh, different funding sources um, to try to keep moving on the housing um, issue. So is it safe to say then that some of what we've seen or a lot of what we've seen of people's interest in housing and development in the strategic plan and the last two years of the legislature mean that our community is basically going to see a lot of growth in this area over the next four to 10 years. Um, well, a lot of our community was sort of exempt from Act 250 review anyway, um, but the push is really for communities like ours to take on a lot, a lot of the growth at this point, it feels like. Um, so, um, and, I would say uh, it's a it's a real reason why we're doing the transit oriented development project right now, um, and really trying to figure out how to how to do that appropriately and, and correctly. Um, I think there's good um, logical reason why um, there ought to be a focus where we have transit service already, uh, and where we have water and sewer service already, um, and can um, really help address that housing crisis okay. in a way that we're not sprawling in the state of Vermont and just increasing long-term operation and maintenance of new infrastructure if we just keep on going out. Um, exactly what that looks like here, I would really encourage folks to really pay attention to the transit oriented development project when we get that up and running and out. Um, because I think we'll, we will really try to bring some visualizations to what, what that can look like so folks can feel comfortable with um, where we're going. How will that timeline mesh with the comprehensive plan re redo? <coughs> um, it sounds like it might mesh well or overlap. Yep, um, so I think the intent is that the transit oriented development project is gonna be moving faster. The planning commission will get a, um, Kind of a kickoff meeting at their meeting at the in August, um, and um, the timeline's pretty quick at the moment. I'm a little hesitant that that's a real timeline, but it is <laughs> currently at the moment relatively quick. Like in the um, late winter, we would have something that we're um, moving on. So, yeah, I don't. That was two years. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be quite that quick, but we'll see. Wow. Um, so one could really allegedly really or, or potentially really inform the other. Yes. Oh, I thought they were going to overlap a lot more. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let me, I'm not sure what's next. Let me just go to the digital quick. Uh, changes to the property tax. Um, abatement and tax sales. Um, so you may remember we had the tax sale policy and delinquent po tax policy on a previous agenda and we tabled that. 
um, just to be able to stop and take a look and make sure that we were um, meeting these new laws correctly. And so the um, new tax sale policy and delinquent tax policy you've got in your consent agenda tonight um, does meet these new, these new requirements. Um, and we will um, stay tuned with the uh, Department of Taxes as they um, work on translation services and a number of different things that are really um, helpful in this bill to make sure uh, we are being transparent and, um, and clear about this so folks, folks know um, um, the best way to be able to get in a payment plan and um, make sure we don't have to get to the place of a tax sale because that is not the hope. Um, so charter amendments, just so folks know, um, because it, this process takes a little bit of time. Last April in 2023, not this past April, uh, the um, Essex voter, Essex Junction voters approved some charter changes. Those were approved by the um, legislature this year. So um, those were all relatively minor. Uh, one of the things included no longer electing a moderator because the moderator is no longer playing the same role that they played when we actually had a town meeting style vote. Um, so those charter changes are, are set. Um, just so folks know, we don't have a full complete new charter with these changes like really <laughs> in there yet, but that, that will be coming and we'll get that um, done. A um, few other things of relevance I just wanted to, to make folks aware of. Um, there is a county and regional governance study, which establishes a committee to study um, how to improve structure and organization of county and regional government. So um, that will be interesting. Um, S309, um, interesting stuff in here, including um, uh, it requires that drivers give at least four feet of clearance when passing people walking, biking, and rolling. So just so folks are aware. Um, the other thing that I just thought was sort of fascinating is there's a thing called an Idaho stop. Yeah. This is just being studied. This is not <laughs> coming into play, but essentially as a bicyclist, um, if you come to a stop sign and you clearly see no other folks at that uh, intersection, um, you would be allowed to roll through. So interesting. This has changed in other places already like Portland, Oregon. Um, uh, federal rulemaking regarding website accessibility. So this is not from the state legislature. This is from federal government and from rulemaking just in terms of stepping up the website level requirements for ADA. So uh, Ashley has that on her radar and we'll make sure that we are um, keeping in compliance with that. Um, we've got until April, 2027. So we've got some time, but we'll definitely be thinking about that. Um, there might be a budget implication associated with that one. <laughs> Um, there is also, um, there were two other things I was going to point out and I forget what they are right now, but, um, I will remember them, I'm sure, and let you folks know, but essentially for the most part, um, oh, sorry, there was a whole nother slide. That's fine. Um, okay. Act 160, um, domestic animals running at large and also a little bit of a shift to the animal control officers. So we will um, be working with Essex PD to make sure we are um, in line with these trainings and make sure um, we are up to speed there. Then that's it. Okay. okay. Um, so yes, there are lots of other little, little things that, um, we've got as well, but I think for the most part, those are the big things um, and we will continue to adjust um, as we need to. That was a lot. Yeah. Um, and it was an excellent um, compilation that you put together and really appreciate you getting it to us a week, a week in advance so we can go through it. Um, yeah. And VLC, like you said, VLCT keeps um, putting more info out. So, um, 
Yeah. Karen and Laurie, that was a very busy five months, six <laughs> months. Um, anything that we didn't cover that you two are particularly interested, proud, or involved in from the session that you uh, want to call out? I can start. I just really want to thank Regina. That was an excellent overview. I feel like it refreshed my memory of being back in the state house and passing those. Um, Slight trauma, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all good because now I'm removed from it. But we did have a really <laughs> ambitious and productive um, session, and I think especially this year before the biennium ended, we we're really trying to um, pass a lot and. And people saw like a lot of it came at the the end of it. So I'm like, do I even know what the latest version that we passed? Because there was a lot of work to really um, get compromised. So um, I think just in hearing this, because I was here for the strategic um, visioning piece as well, um, like some of these laws coordinated with that, with the open and transparent government piece of it, um, the open meeting law, the ethics piece of it was to really see some consistency at the state level and just initiate a foundation of that and see where we can go. Um, and I appreciate, I think it was Raj, your question about the, the housing piece of it, because I do think that was another theme from it is that um, city centers, downtown centers, you know, are going to play a key role in the housing crisis, but then it's up to each community to kind of really reflect like, okay, how much do we want to commit and what is our role? So um, it's just great to see that there was meshing of what was happening at the legislative level and the questions and things that you're asking at the city council level. So appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to take a minute and talk a kind of a public service announcement for the community. So in 2022, we passed legislation. It's now, it's Act 167. And basically, we directed Green Mountain Care Board to hire a consultant um, and do a really deep dive into our hospital system and specifically our hospital system, but he also kind of went broader. And so, obviously, a lot of the cost increases that we're all experiencing are due to healthcare. And so he has now come back. Um, he did a whole lot of meetings, met with communities, and now is coming back to communities with his findings. And the next step from that will be a report that will come out this fall that will help Agency of Human Service, Green Mountain Care Board, and the legislature where appropriate to hopefully, you know, make some changes to ensure we have a affordable and a sustainable healthcare system going forward. So my community um, announcement is that on July 29th, the, there will be a presentation at the South Burlington Library um, from this consultant, Bruce Hemery. I forget, Harmery, I think is how you say his last name. And it will be about our healthcare system through UVMMC. And so I highly recommend if people are interested, it's they're only doing it in person, so there's no video you can watch. But I uh, think it starts at four. I can. I will we'll be. I'll be putting something out on front porch forum. Um, but I. I highly recommend that if you can make it, that you do. I think it's. Um, I've gone to a couple throughout the state, and they're very, very informative. Great, appreciate that. And I just also want to say thank you for being available throughout the session and the session before, for questions, feedback emails, phone calls, all of the, the assistance you both provided um, and, and the background and the help, um, very much appreciated. Yeah. Um, Amber, I can barely see with the reflections, but do you have anything? Just wanna kind of go around the room. No, I don't have any questions. Okay. Thanks, Lori. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Regina. Yeah, thank you both very much for advocating on our behalf. Um, you know, for folks listening or folks watching this later, the <clears throat> presentation we just went through has a lot of links to really good summaries that are actually very approachable. If people are curious about some of these things, um, they're quick reads and they're interesting. Um, perhaps not all eight bills or nine bills, but um, there's something in there for everybody. Um, <laughs> and and, Brad, and there's going to be some impact that you're going to have uh, down the line in your community. So, Raj, can I just add one thing? And I would just say as people sure. review things or have questions, obviously reach out to Karen or I, and we're always available to help answer questions and provide more information where needed.
That's great. Thank you. Um, there's only one person in the audience, so I'm going to call her by name and ask her if she has any questions or comments. Diane, anything on this topic? Yeah, I want to thank Lori and Karen for doing an excellent job. Thank you for, for standing up for people here in the city. Thank you. And I'm not, I hope you heard that from Diane. Um, so thank you. And I'm not seeing anyone with their hand raised on Zoom. Uh, there's no action item on this. So um, yeah, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hope to see you both around town soon. Thank you, everyone, for all your work. Thanks. Have a good night. Um, all right. Well, the next thing is an executive session, so we can um, perhaps consider the consent agenda first. Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I will move to approve the consent agenda. I will second. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, motion passes unanimously. Manager report, council member comments. Um, so for me, thanks Tim for recognizing Ron Bundy earlier um, and his help with Plainfield. I just wanted to also uh, add to that message for the community as a whole in terms of uh, if folks are interested in helping the communities and individuals who are um, really still struggling with this last uh, flood event. Um, if you're interested in volunteering, you can go to vermont.gov backslash volunteer. Um, and any interest in financial dona donations, you can go to um, btfloodresponse.org. Um, so just two ways to help folks. Um, also just wanna let folks know uh, again, that we are set up, the city offices are still set up at 2 Lincoln, we just are in a different part of the building. So now you access it from the entrance that is closest to the fire station. Um, and that's all I've got. Great. Anything from anyone? I, some of us had the opportunity to go to the fire department um, on the 8th and um, witness some life-saving awards being handed out to our firefighters. I really encourage folks to go to our website or our Facebook page and read more about um, the incidents and the firefighters that received them, among them uh, Tim Miller. Mm -hmm. So thank you to the firefighters. And it was uh, <clears throat> well, well timed because uh, during the ceremony, right as it was about to start, they were called out <laughs> for a call. And I believe also right after oh, we left. It always looks um, good when the truck's leaving a parade. Right. So it was well done on that front. Um, <laughs> and really, really proud of the of the department. That's all I have. Um, so executive session. Find the memo. We're almost there. So we're going into the executive session for two different reasons. Correct. Yeah. So there's two the memos there's one... are in two different places. Yeah, so I, if someone wants to find the one from the interviews, I have the one from the contract. I think contracts. I have the interviews. <laughs> interviews are page four, four. and five, yep. I think. Okay. So I move that the city council enter into executive session to discuss appointment of public officials pursuant to 1 VSA 313A3 to include the city manager. Second. Is that all? Is yeah, that, it's just one. That's okay. that one. And I'll move that the city council make the specific finding that pre premature disclosure of contractual matters would place the city at substantial disadvantage, and move that the city council enter into executive session to discuss a contract pursuant to one VSA section three one three a one a to include the city council and city manager. Second. Two motions on the table. Do them as one. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Both motions passed unanimously. I believe we'll come back for a moment to the meeting um, following to announce uh, announcements for committees. Um, should be less than 30 minutes. And we're in recess. Okay, I'm gonna start the recording. Okay, City Council is back in session. Um, I am going to make uh, some motions for some committee appointments. So I'll move that we appoint Andrea Shortsleeve for a three-year term 
Leslie Goldring for a term that ends in June 2025, and Warren Spinner for a three-year term to the Tree Advisory Committee. And I'll further move that we appoint Luke Brockmeyer to the Development Review Board for a three-year term ending in June 2027. And then we appoint Kirsty Pascal to the Planning Commission to finish out a vacant seat with a term ending in June of 2026. A second. Excellent. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.